think these guys stopped to rent a movie. Got some kind of breakdown up here. Looks like it's gonna take a while. Well, this is a blast from the past. We are WCBN Channel 12.
going to try that one more time, and they want everybody to uh, really voice up this time and join in. So let's give the band one more chance on that, would we? The crowd, the crowd, one more chance. Sorry, Mr. Journey. Maybe <laughs> 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 did great. <laughs> Gracious Father, we're gathered this afternoon in support of half a million of America's best, those who are now <clears throat> halfway around the world doing what Americans do best, defending freedom. Father, we believe our cause is just and pray for thy blessings on this crusade. Saddam Hussein's blasphemous attempt to portray this as a holy war has clearly failed, and we pray that his blatant aggression against mankind will fail as well. Grant us, Father, an early victory against this evil force and a safe return of our loved ones to this grateful nation they so nobly serve. In the name of the beloved peacemaker who walked those same sands 2,000 years ago, thy son and our savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we owe, we owe this today to the crowd that we have, to a group here that's real concerned with our local service people, and that is the New Hope uh, Presbyterian Church. Ms. Jean knows that he had a, a great deal in bringing this all together. And one of the reasons why we're here today is because our president, our president has asked that we would have a day of prayer in regards to our local service people that are serving in our armed services. And we here in Houston County are here to show our support and our respect for these people and give them and show them that we are 100% behind them and the job that they're doing over there for us. We owe that to them. There are Americans that are doing a tremendous job. And there was something that went on this morning in church that impressed me very much. And that was, a lady said, there is a time to pray for peace. There is also a time to pray for victory. And today, ladies and gentlemen, it's a time to pray for victory because victory will bring peace and peace will bring our local men and women back home to Houston County. Also, we should be here today to pray for the families of these local men. 
they need the support of this community and the local government here in Houston County. And I can assure you that they do have that support. I have it personally on the One time I was a member of the 155th up here. And I know each and every one of them personally. And I know most of their families. And I think that we here today should individually pray for those people that are serving in our armed services and give them the support that they need to bring this to a speedy and fast victory so that we can bring our local people back home, home safe to their loved ones. It's a pleasure for me to be here. It's a pleasure for me to speak for America. Where else can we gather and do what we're doing here today? No other country. We're so lucky. We're just lucky. And we ought to thank God for that because we are a God-fearing nation. Thank you so very much, and I will now pass, the, pass it on to We're going to have some music at this time. Thank you. Long speech because 
I'm not a speech maker to start with. I just had a few things that I put down on a piece of paper uh, that we all could share. Uh, my family runs the history and support of our troops run from the Fort Donaldson Cemetery to the Persian Gulf. And, and, and the fact that we're all here today in support of those troops is something maybe that should have been done a long time ago and maybe a couple of other wars too as well as this one but we don't want to forget those guys that every day they know where our freedom comes from we'd like to have everybody's support and uh, if you'd like to do something to help those people you might write your Washington people in Washington and tell them to reconsider the five billion dollar cut out of the veterans budget this year and next year and also to just quit starving our veterans in the veterans hospitals they can't go over there and lay your life on the line and come back and go in the hospital and face the starvation being starved to death because hospitals are not being run like they should you can't take a hospital administrator out of ohio and send him to, to send him to texas change the policy in any at all. And that's what I have to say to you here today and pray for wow. our families and uh, their members that's in the Persian Gulf today. This year we should do continuously. I'm representing the American Legion Post 73. We, uh, we're 100 percent behind our troops that are over there. I think everybody knows that. Everybody's been talking positive today. And I've been saddened by the uh, amount of negativism in this country. Having been overseas during the Vietnam, the Korean and the Vietnam War, the, uh, can you hear me back there in the back? Better? Okay. Having been overseas and having a son over in, uh, flying a 130 over in uh, Saudi Arabia now, I understand uh, how you people feel. But also, too, these, uh, when I was overseas during the uh, 60s and the, uh, the Jane Fondas and the Peace Sticks turned a lot of us off over there. And uh, I just wanted you to know that uh, we, we don't uh, think that 16% of this population should get all the media attention when 84% of the people are behind the president and our troops over there. Yeah. 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 the same vein, in this week's U.S. News and World Report, the second letter there, the second letter there, I agree with wholeheartedly, it says here, the war in the Gulf is only a few days old, and I feel ashamed, not ashamed because the United States has decided to stand up to a dangerous dictator, but ashamed and embarrassed by my fellow Americans who won't stand behind the present and our troops during this difficult time. The arguments for liberating Kuwait are noble and numerous. The press does not spare the public in its description of Iraq's rape of a small country and its atrocities behind toward its own people and citizens of Kuwait. It is clear that without Allied intervention, Hussein might not have stopped at Kuwait. And I think we all know that because he has already penetrated uh, Saudi Arabia and firing his, uh, uh, bombs into uh, Israel. One other thing I have to notice too, I've been keeping the papers and uh, on the 13th of uh, January, the headline in the Leaf Chronicle said, Congress supports use of force. Second column here on the right said, Sasser Ford opposed war resolution. Yeah. And I'm gonna mention that to him next time he comes to here and I'm gonna keep his paper and tell him I don't support his uh, <laughs> non-support. I suppose you see all these uh, people on television running down our country and burning the flags. Well, we have a small county here, like 7,200 people in the whole county. And last year, the American Legion, we had a, a petition drive to uh, get as many signatures as we could to get to Supreme Court and our congressmen and representatives in Congress to uh, pass a constitutional amendment to uh, make it a federal crime to burn an American flag. Well, in this little small town and surrounding, 
County here, we in the American Legion collected 2,630 signatures to send to Washington. And we sent it on to state headquarters in Nashville where they submitted a uh, million two hundred and something thousand signatures from the state of Tennessee, you know, saying that it's against the law. We think it's wrong to burn the American flag. So I thank all of you in the crowd who signed that petition last year. We did send that on. One other thing I happened to mention, notice in the, on television recently, and I'm going to let you go. Uh, in uh, Nashville the other day, we had a high school up there marching against the, our troops, against the people. And there was uh, some young girls there. They looked to be uh, about 12, 14 years old. One of them had a big sign that said, Remember Vietnam. Well, she wasn't even born during Vietnam. <laughs> and I thought that's rather asinine. I really did. And I, and I thank you all for your time. We have uh, one more version of uh, God Bless em, the USA right here.
the uh, no, I'm not going to say. One of the uh, ladies that started this rally, I presume, pre presume is Miss Jean No City. I think she's done a real good job of getting this and putting it together. Let's give her a hand. She's going to say a few words to us, and we're going to turn the program over to her. This program was put together by the youth group at New Hope Church, and I'd like at this time if they'd come up with their banners, and anybody else that has banners, bring them up and kind of march across and let everybody see what you have right here. Come on, don't be shy. Get your banner, shall I? All of you. This started with a Sunday school class that was concerned. It was our older Sunday school class that was very concerned about the people that were protesting, and they were upset about it. We decided we needed to do something. So we took it to the whole youth group of 25, and they planned this, they put the ideas together, and they're all here today with the banners that they've made if they would find their way up here with them. They're coming. I think this is real special because we have a church membership of about 24 people. introduce myself and so I uh, myself is Carol Miller from the Erin Cumberland Presbyterian Church right down the street. So uh, to start off how about God bless America. Everybody we had the band has left us so we're it okay. God bless America.
favorites. Anchors away. Anchors away. <laughs> I think we have a Navy man over here. Anchors away, my boy. Anchors away. I may mess up on a word or two. some help. <laughs> we got to have some words here. Okay, come on. I'm going to be very embarrassed if I forget the words here. <laughs> anchors away, my boy. Anchors away. Farewell to college joys. We sail at break of day. night ashore, drink to the bone, from <laughs> here's wishing you a happy voyage home, okay. I've been retired too long. <laughs>
starts at 6.30, and it's for any of you who would like to come. It's a good chance to band together. It's not a, a down kind of meeting. It's an up, work together, support each other, and be together. So you're all very welcome to come. At this time, would anyone who has relatives serving in Operation Desert Storm please come up front? So I'd like everybody to see just how many people we really have in this county. Take a picture for me. I know. This says, oh, man. <laughs> Dickie's going to feel for you. That's right. I said, I don't have to say a word. That's, that's it. <laughs> Do all head relation over? Yeah. Okay. Is this not a good sized crowd? Just a very small area.
<laughs> I was over there seeing Pete and Donna's baby. Did you see Pete and Donna's baby? Yeah, they looked like that baby last night. That are hanging around still. Surely you got into
and I, I said I always wore the smallest shoe in the family because I wore an eight and that was small. Carol wore nine, my mother wore ten. Everybody's got fit. Larry wears fourteen, I think, or something. <laughs>
Just great. <laughs> We're so glad everybody came to support the camera. Yeah. yeah. That's all right, that's what I want. <laughs> Guard members are back home tonight, home from the Persian Gulf. A crowd of people showed up at Fort Campbell today to welcome home members of the 269th Military Police Company out of Dyersburg and the 155th Engineer Company from Waverly and Aaron, Tennessee. They've been gone since January and their families say it's been hard without them. And I have really learned, I have grown up very fast, even though I've been a military wife for 20 years just about. Uh, this is the first time he's been gone this long and it was kind of scary. Their duties in Saudi Arabia ranged from paving roads to providing police support. A very special...